Thomas Mantha the Ford today. I have to speak about the dilemma of time. Get ready to learn a few things. The Lord's dealing with me about this thing called time. I'll call it the dilemma of time, the dilemma we have. You can't wait for certain things, but it seems like people always want to make you wait for something. So first of all, I speak by the ultimate source of power, the Holy Ghost Himself, that He crushes all time wasters, time wastings, liars, cheaters, thieves, con people, um, things that get in the way of people's progress, you know, all of that. I want to sum it all up into one place and put it out here, lay it on the table, put the table over there, and let the power of the Holy Ghost just blow it up and destroy it. I mean, completely annihilate it to nothing. This thing called time wasting, the waste of time, the wrong use of time, people that are deluded, lost, I'm, f I'm flowing here in the Holy Ghost as I always do, you know. I was going to just talk about what time is and let's talk about the importance of it. But right away, this word of judgment is coming out of my mouth. So let it happen. Almost nobody's a prophet. So if, since I am, let me glorify God and get results from the prophetic realm that I walk in under His anointing. Let the Holy Ghost destroy everything that's a waste of time. In Jesus' name, it's done. Something's happening right now. Something's transpiring in the realm of the Spirit. To bridge the gap, you know, about the loss of time. You can't lose any more time. The time you've lost, doesn't it feel terrible? Well, you can't lose any more. The only thing you can do about life is start today with the next plan of motion and the only thing you really have to know in life is what to do next. And then you have to do it. What do I do next? What do I do next? Every scintilla of a second, every twinkling of an eye, which is a twinkle. It's like a second or less. Every flash of light, bang, a second, quick flash. Even in milliseconds, which is thousand, a thousandth of a second. You just need to know what to do next and then do it. So I pray this blessing upon good people. And my, myself first and everybody else after that. Because it starts with, it always starts with the head. The head of the body is Jesus Christ. It starts, everything starts with him. And he comes down upon his heads, which is leaders. And then it flows like Psalm 133 says, you know, the oil flows down on the head of Aaron, down its face, down the beard, down into the garments, down into the body. And he said, there should be unity there, and where there's unity, I'll command my blessing. A lot of disunity, you know, which short circuits the blessings of God. But you have to find a way, still in this crazy world, even in the crazy church, in all kinds of environments, you have to find a way to have unity with those who want to be unified with you. And you, first of all, you need to be unified with yourself. Everything starts with the head. So, of course, I have to say this to myself and then to everybody else. And anybody that's doing anything, they're, they're really doing that, even if they don't tell you that. Like a preacher is preaching because he's called and he's, he's teaching the word to people because that's his life, you know, that's his livelihood. I'm not just talking about a career or how you get paid or whatever. I'm talking about to obey God, to flow in God. I mean, that's a, to the benefit of the person doing it. So let's know that. Now, I carry that principle over into the realm of practical reality of using time correctly because everybody has a calling. Every single person has a calling, has a, 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 a special gifting, a special destiny, a special um, thing to get done, a certain thing that they're good at, and you need to follow your expertise. So what are you good at and what can you do that no one else can do? Make a note of that. What can you do that nobody else has the ability to do it like you do it? The gifting that God gave you and all that, the talent, the skill, the ability. Well, that's what you need to do every day of your life and focus on that.
and not look in other in other directions. A man is a multi-billionaire businessman said, I've seen, too, I've seen as many people fail from attempting to do too many things as I've seen people fail for attempting to do too few things. So some, but it's really the one thing that you can focus on that you're going to succeed at, but that prior, prioritization is also something that deals with time management. Working on the priority of the task at hand, I'll talk a, more, a, little, a little more about that. But uh, prioritizing things. Well, what is it that you're called to do? What is the grace that's upon you? You gotta dive deep into it and get busy about it. Sometimes you feel, many people feel a void, like there's something missing, something lacking. There's not the shalom there. Shalom. One of the differences, different definitions of shalom, Jehovah Shalom, one of God's names is peace, of course, we, we call it, but uh, it means nothing broken, nothing missing. Nothing's missing from the equation. Everything you need to work with is there, and nothing's broken. It's put together and it's working correctly. Wow, that's, that's more powerful than just peace. Someone says, shalom is peace, shalom. Peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, shalom to you. You know, we all use that expression. But a greater mention of shalom is when you could say and declare uh, everything be fixed in your life. Nothing broken, nothing missing. Wow. And it's the absence of chaos. Jehovah Shalom is a destroyer of chaos. Chaos is a lack of peace. It's a total disruption of peace. Disturbing the peace. It's a, it's a crime in, in America to disturb the peace. It's, a, it's an offense. Disturbing the peace. In other words, making too much noise, unnerving people. In Africa, there's no such thing. They tried to pass ordinances some years ago, but no one enforced them really. You know. There was a guy in the street playing his thing on a speaker and singing his songs and all that. Some people might think it's cool. I kind of got a little bit like relaxed about it, but at first I was really like, I want quiet here. I want to be in a quiet place. I spoke about that the other day. So I said to the, 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 the business, we were doing, the man I was meeting with, we were doing some business, some important thing. And I said, you know, who's, who's going to stop that guy? You know, it's, just, it's, against the, it's against the law. Then you have taxi drivers that like talk on their phone while they're driving and they drive horribly and then you're stressed out. You're affected by it. They don't care. And then I, I bring it to their attention, you know. The other day I wanted to say, you know, it's an offense, it's against the law to drive talking on your phone. But, you know, these guys, when you tell them anything, they pipe down, shut down, and switch off. That's the end of the thing. And I was coming from somewhere yesterday, and this driver was driving crazy, you know, flipping around, turning around, and uh, avoiding other cars. And, he, 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 and I said something, and he made a complaint, like he said, oh, them, you know. You know, I said, no, it's, I shouted, no, it's you. <laughs> oh, the guy was done. <laughs> I said, it's you. It's not them. It's the way you drive. And then another one, we were going into an intersection. He's on the phone and he stopped, you know, and he hesitated. And then these motorcycles were trying to come around. I don't blame them. They're in a hurry. They're just trying to move, you know. Everybody's trying to move. But a driver who has a passenger in his car, motorcycles is another thing. By the way, if you get on the back of a motorcycle with some guy driving, it, it, to me it's a serious lack of wisdom. Or you're that poor that you don't uh, even have the money to take a cheap taxi, you know? I, I, I pity the person. This guy, Mr. T, I pity the fool who wants to mess with me. I pity the fool, until you say, Mr. T in America, you know, the, that actor, Mr. T, funny guy. But I pity people that have to do things like that. I saw a lady holding on for a dear life on the back of a bike, and I thought, oh, you, you gotta just hope that the guy's gonna make it. But some people don't. A lot of bad things happen. You don't see it all. We were driving the other day, and some guy came speeding and, you know, almost was gonna hit a car and crashed into those barriers. And I heard it, it was so loud, and I was like, ooh, that guy is, that guy is hurt. He flew off the bike and hit the whatever. I couldn't see because it was behind us. I thought, oh my God. 
So, you know, you got to be careful. But you need to be a bit unhurried and a bit suave. And, but some people, they're such a, they're such a low class state, they don't understand that. Environment, you know? Environment, the right way, also ties in with um, your use of time and all that. But chaos, so there's chaos, let me finish the point. There's chaos out there. That's a good point. Environment ties in with it all. You got to have the right environment to be productive. And then you could use your time wisely. Yes, 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 yes. But chaos, shalom is also meaning the destroyer of chaos. It means he's the God that blesses us to have nothing broken in our world and nothing missing in our world, in our personal world. That's powerful, not just peace. And um, there's something great to that. The destroyer of chaos. Chaos causes like derision, tension. The C word, which I don't like to use, is I don't keep it in my vocabulary. I always tell people I don't speak that word. You know the word I'm talking about. And uh, C O N F U S something. You know, everybody's like, oh, you know, I, I, I don't deal in that realm. I'll tell you one thing I'm never, one thing I am never is that. Whatever warfare, obstacles, or situation, whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I'm doing or not doing, one thing I never am is that. I never, I never don't know what I want to do, what I want to achieve, what I want to accomplish, what I'm, where I'm at, what I'm at. So, but you need the touch of God upon your health. Part of it's shalom. So claim this shalom right now, the Holy Ghost. I didn't have this in my notes or any notes, really. I never do. I just flow by the Spirit. So at times I have a lot of notes I could teach from notes in my books and all that. Yeah, of course I do. And, uh, but these messages are Spirit-breathed. They're fresh manna from heaven every single day that I come on. Thank God for this anointing. Oh, my God. Lord, it's amazing. So the Holy Ghost has brought this forth, shalom, the shalom touch, receive it right now. It's not just peace, it's not just tranquility, it's the destroyer of chaos, anything that's standing in your way to keep you from achieving anything. And anything you need in your world, now that ties over with Jehovah Jireh. Jireh is, the, 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 the Hebrew definition of Jireh is the Father who sees our future, our Father who sees our future, and we'll see to it that it happens. He'll work on, help work on things to provide that we can get done what he wants done. That's very powerful. That's more than just him paying our bills. You see, shalom, we always say it means peace. Jaira means finances or, you know, help you pay your bills or whatever. No, it's much deeper than that. The destroyer of chaos. How, how about that? So in the beginning of this message, when I, the first minute when I was speaking here just now, a few minutes ago, I, I, I saw a vision, I saw the Lord say, take all of the things that are wasting our time, and I take them and put them together and put them on a table, not right in front of me, because I don't want to feel the effects of everything flying. Put it over there somewhere, Lord, you smash it and, and annihilate it. Annihilation is a word that means brings it to nothing, like it doesn't exist, pulverizes it, destroys it completely. A N N I. H I L Annihilation A N N I H I L A T I O N Annihilation destroy means to be destroyed and completely made to be as nothing. Not as nothing, but it becomes nothing. It's not usable again. It's annihilated, meaning destroyed. Everything that's in the way. The dilemma of time. Jesus said, redeem the time for the days of evil. Jesus also said, another scripture, uh, work while it's day because the night is coming when no man can work. And I want to jump into something else. Discernment has a lot to do. Discernment has to do with sight. Now, you have to be, have a tough resolve and look at everybody and everything that doesn't care about your progress and dismiss it from your world and not feel bad about it. I'm giving you a prophetic instruction. You can get to the point you're like, yeah, I see that. Before it bothered you, it made you feel bad. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? What's wrong with them? Why are they like that? 
How come people are so reliable? Why can people be so evil and want to attack you? Why is this like going on? And why, you know, pe you have to look at all of that and then don't care about it anymore. That's a realm of maturity, a realm of you harnessing in your emotional uh, thought process and all that to think positively, no matter what. Donald Trump's church, uh, uh, the Marble Collegiate Church in New York on, I was there, Fifth Avenue and 23rd Street, somewhere like that. I can't remember. It's a beautiful little building. And Norman, uh, he was a very old man. I'm sure he's gone to be with the Lord. Yeah, he, he can't still be around. I think he died some years ago. But he wrote this famous book called The Power of Positive Thinking. How to work with your mind. No wonder Donald Trump became such an anomaly and a phenomenon and a success. That was his spirit. That was his pastor, Norman Vincent Peale. He would consider his apostle, his, his leader in, in the church. That's the church he wanted to go to. He didn't go to none of these, oh, I see people online. I talk about it a lot, but I, I think I'm going to get away from that eventually. But sometimes the Lord wants me to mention it. You see some people and you wonder why. How are they so bereft of understanding? Preachers, I mean. How are they so low level? How is their showcase just the same song, same sound, the same tune, and some funny message that doesn't even resonate? and teaches you nothing. Donald Trump didn't go to a church like that. He went to the place where the guy says, you gotta work with your mind to be po have a positive outlook on everything and that will begin to affect your world, but then first of all, it'll affect, it'll affect you in a good way. So you gotta work on yourself. So this is a prophetic word here that everything that doesn't seem to be working for your environmental, pro your, 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 your success and your progress environmentally, meeting people the way they are, toss them to the wind and let the wind take them where they want to be. Two men of God I just heard talk about not holding charge to anyone, loving everybody no matter how they are. And these are two of the most powerfully anointed men ever to live on earth. They learned the power of forgiveness and not being offended. Not holding grudges. This is deep. That's powerful. And then uh, one was a great apostle of teaching faith. And I was listening to him last night. And he, it's these guys who were in, graduated from his Bible school and they got a funny revelation. They went off the way. And, and then he said, many people went to ask him, what do you think about this? He said, I, I, it's not scriptural. It's not right. It's, 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 uh, it's erroneous and without knowing who the person was that was going around teaching it it was one of his graduates from his Bible school he's the leader it's one of his spiritual kids yeah so he still was loving in his mind toward them and then they came back and apologized and repented a few times you know and then they got their revelation like you know the only place is to be his home he, he didn't tell them they were off. He just said, oh, I forgive you. Yeah, I always love you. I, I never gave up on you. What a thing for a leader to say. See, that's the realm of maturity. Now, no matter you, now here's the benefit of it. Here's the benefit of that. You, whatever anybody else does in the world, it doesn't affect you internally. Are you seeing that? It's not that they're just like meek and silly, you know, what we would call a weak and, and, and soft-hearted and all that, you know. No, it's, a, it's also like a spiritual weapon because the devil uses offenses. There's one man that wrote a book about that. Satan uses offense to hurt people. Oh, it's, it's something. And then people get bitter and they get wounded and damaged, they have a bad outlook on things. I know it could affect the greatest people. I'm teaching you, I can tell you, try to, try to get me too, but can't, can't win. Is the way you do it. You have so much resolve, so much from the Lord. His power, His glory, His grace, by the Holy Ghost in your life. You're possessed by Him, you're possessed by His vision. You, you know, 
what you're doing, how you're carrying on, where you're going, you know, what you need to get done and what you need to do and how to manage time, how to get on with his program and nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Because you're filled with his glory. You and him. It, it doesn't matter. So then it doesn't matter what anybody else does. Does it? Nope. What matters is how you are. You and him together. Say amen. Jesus said to his mother when she asked him, where were you? She, he said, don't you know, dear mother, I'm supposed to be about the father's business. And the thing that goes beyond our natural understanding is this. When, when, uh, Jesus was on the cross and he said, forgive them, Father, the ones that were killing him. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? The level of strength he had to not rail back at them, even to correct them or try to help them understand something, he didn't do it. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, I pray that a special grace. Several things are coming down the pipeline from heaven as I'm being downloaded and imparted and, and coming. I'm speaking them out as they're coming. Receive these as prophetic touches and empowerments because they're tangible. One was that God would destroy everything as time, wasting your time. I saw a vision of that. Right? Well, here, after I turn this thing on. I didn't see that vision before. And it's broken and destroyed in Jesus' name. Every time-wasting thing. And every scheme of anybody or the devil or anybody that's trying to waste our time or be in our way, they're, they're being crushed by heaven's power. And then having the right environment and then not being offended. And, and then not feeling so disappointed about what other people don't do that you thought they probably should have done. Can't let it bother you. Now you're the victor of all of that. Okay, so the devil tries to throw all these things. And God just keeps destroying them. And then now the next one, to have the grace. To, to forgive the unforgivable. I mean, the, the people that seem almost unforgivable. It doesn't mean God won't judge them for their evils. He will. It doesn't mean they escape. See, some, sometimes we think if I forgive them, like I'm letting them off the hook. No, you're not. You're letting yourself off the hook. Ha, 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 ha. sayata. This is powerful. Power filled, full, full, full of power, this message. Oh my. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. When you forgive, you're not letting them off the hook, you're letting yourself off the hook. Because that hook came, that hook of offense came to snare you. It, it, it would if you allow it. And don't feel too bad if it got you for a while. Just repent right now. I mean, tell the Lord. And let's pray this right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm yours. And I say, forgive me, Lord, wherever I have allowed anyone to offend me. Release me now, in Jesus' name. I'm releasing myself, but you touch me and release me from all of that. In Jesus' name. I'm free. Then you can't, I go to another one, you can't have any regrets about something you did that was good 
but it wasn't reciprocated or you feel like, why did I do all that or why did I, no. Leave everything as a seed. I thought back to one man of God that I, I gave him a very large thing and, and he, I mean, it was huge. It was, I can't say the amount. You, you'd, get, you, you'd get scared if I told you the amount. It, it was beyond, in the, in the millions, okay. And uh, and you feel like, well, I got to count that as a seed. But sometimes you don't even feel cared. The care or the you know the whole thing or the there's so many ways it can it can go. And you say, no, everything I do unto the Lord, He's going to bless me back. Lift your hands right now, Father. In Jesus' name, everything that I have done to serve you and to advance your kingdom by my effort, by my seed, by my finance, by my giving, by my application of things, whatever I've done that was good, I command that it's seed that's growing it is already, but let, let's speak to it. And that seed will germinate and give us the harvest in Jesus' name. And when we get it, we can't say, oh my, look how I did. I know one man of God. Who, who had some great experience with that. He, ta he talked a lot about it. But he's a multi-millionaire. And when you sow on the level... Of, of high things, you're also going to be a multi-millionaire. I prophesy in Jesus' name. I'm still in the prayer. I didn't stop yet. And say, Lord, everything that I've sown is being germinated and, and watered and growing and it's being resurrected up into the... See, a seed goes in the ground and dies and then it comes back in the new life. And it produces harvest. It's the same way in the realm of the spirit. It's the same way in finances. It's the same way in life. It's the same way in business. It's the same way in ministry. It's the same way in everything. And the Lord... <laughs> Seeing some interesting people here. I'm just amused. Okay, so you, you'll be... You'll be rewarded. And that day is coming. It doesn't matter if you ever feel tired or you feel like something was missed somewhere. The Lord still says what's coming is greater than what was. Do you believe that? I believe it. In fact, it has to be so. The scripture even says the latter house will be greater than the former. Why? Because you're a different person. I've heard great men that had great moves of God, I've, as I have, over the years. And sometimes you think, well, I'd like to be back then again in the same thing. And I shake my head also and I say, no. Because I wasn't as developed then as I am now. I didn't know all that I know then like I know now. Do you have fond memories of situations and times gone by? Of course. We call it, we, we call it affectionately the good old days. And there were some things that were very good that really can't be repeated again. And though that seems sad, you have to still look at the now and say, now the latter glory is here. The latter house, I'm stepping over the threshold into the latter house, and it has to be greater than the former. Or else, why did God say that it would be? The silver and the gold is mine, saith the Lord, Haggai 2. And he said, he said, vengeance is mine also in Romans 12. I will repay. And he said also, what seemed to be eaten away in, J in Joel chapter 1 and 2. He said, I will restore back to you the years. Why did you say that if he wasn't going to do it? Say a big amen. This is powerful. So that day is coming right now, and whatever you need, 
Shalom wants to give it to you. Whatever you need, Jaira wants to give it to you. Jehovah, of course, before you. Kana, Q-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, is one of the words of God, one of the names of God also. Means uh, he's jealous over us. We're the apple of his eye. He's watching over us. And guess what? He's our father and we're his own children. I don't talk about that that much, but I'm getting it right now and I probably need to talk about it a bit more. Think about the fact of how much he loves you as your own father. How much he loves me at, as my own father. More than any earthly father could love. More than any earthly mother could care or show compassion. More than, much more than. El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. A mama only has two. But God says he's many, multi, multi, like many breasts. Are you serious? And then the scripture also talks about God in the realm sometimes as a nursing mother who cares for her child. As a nursing mother would care for her child. Don't I care for you? How much more I'll care for you, the Lord says. In Isaiah 54, also somewhere in the book of Job, also in... Uh, A few other places. Jesus even said, I wanted you to gather you together like a mother hen would gather her brood of chicks, but you wouldn't flow with me. But he still, watch this, still Jesus was there trying. But they didn't receive it. But in John 1, 12, John chapter 1, verse 1 introduces Jesus as the word. who dwells among us. And then the 12th verse, he said, if you receive him, he'll give you power to walk as a son of God, which means in authority, blessed, and having, having all the other attributes of God coming to you to manifest themselves for you, to you, for you, through you, on your behalf, his favor, his glory, his power, his blessings. Do we believe that? We need to. Do we think about it enough? No. Should we meditate on that right now a lot more? Yes. So I have to title this uh, The Dilemma of Time and So Much More, because I'm in so much more right now. But time is, is ticking away. So the use of it must be perfected by us. Our, our administration of time must be perfected by us. Our management of, of time must be perfected by us. Optimization, meaning to make things work better. Yeah. Arranging, scheduling, planning. But here's something, here's something I really like. The prioritization of tasks. What is it that you need to do? What is it that only you can do? What is the thing that you can work on this coming week? That nobody else can do it like you. That's something that will produce results because you're the one That's brilliant at that. You're the one that's gifted and anointed to do that. Then also, the, you have to delegate, but sometimes to delegate, you also have to first get involved in it. Sometimes that's a bit hard. So I have to get involved in all this because they don't, people don't know, but I need to teach them and train them how to do it. Then I gotta be the instigator or the initiator or the applicator of the, the thing. Well, you gotta do that. That's part of your deal. D-E-A-L, the deal. The deal is the thing that you, the deal you make with God is to be in covenant with Him, to produce His life, to advance His kingdom all around the world. 
and to be successful in your particular mission, whatever your business or your career or your life is, that you succeed in that. That's your deal. So I have a question too. What is it that you'll pay the price for now to get in your tomorrow what really needs to be there instead of just worrying about the right now? What is it that you could do that may seem sacrificial or over diligent, you know, strenuous? You need supernatural strength to do it, you know? What is that thing? That you need to do now, or in these days that'll produce the next, the next day at abundance that you've been waiting for. So in whatever realm you can do it, you need to do that. As much as it takes to do that, you need to do that. And that's another thing came down the pipeline from the Holy Ghost. Heavenly revelation here. I, I release the power of that upon you right now. That you'll make the decision and be able to say, what can I do now? Instead of wasting my time or doing common things or typical things that everybody else can do, let me leave those alone. And also the people that don't want to cooperate with whatever it is you're doing, let me leave them alone and not care about it. Not even care. Toss it all to the wind and let it fly where it flies. And you work on the vision of what God has given you to do and get done in Jesus' name. When you feel angry, it's because you're living in the past. When you, feel, when you feel fearful, it may be because you're living too much in the future, in your thought life. How is it going to work? And you feel like, oh. When you feel a lot of peace and the ability to do something now is when you're really living in the present. So we need to be present-minded. You know, working in the present. Here's another thing. There is no future. You say, how can you say that? Because when you get there, you'll rename it today. Tomorrow is a day that's there, but when you get into tomorrow, it's no longer tomorrow. It changes, on, it changes to today. So this wondering about what's going to happen all the time is an erroneous way to think. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wrong, it's a poor use of time. It's wrong time management. Time management in the, in the opposite direction. Work with the now, work with the now. Don't always look till tomorrow. Sometimes we, we say, well, this is supposed to happen tomorrow. So that kind of trips up my, my progress because I'm waiting for that, that thing to happen, but I'm not doing enough today. This is, this, is, this is a realm of time management. The, the, the dilemma of time, the dilemma of using time correctly, that's where we're at. I think, I think we've always been there but didn't realize it. <laughs> if a kid that's young could figure this out, they'd be far, far ahead. And some have, and they go far, far beyond the people around them. When you catch this revelation, hey, it's all about what I do now. It's not about what anybody else does or doesn't do. If there's something that I can do, the Lord's going to help me to do it. And we're getting on with the program that he has right now, today. The dilemma of time. Time management, good use of time. Uh, definition of time management is the proper excellent use of time in the realm of getting things accomplished. And the Lord has called all of us to be achievers, 
is successful. That's a command. It's not a suggestion. Really, if you think about it. It's really a command. So let the Lord show you. I'm praying prophetically that God will show you what it is you're to do next. What it is you're supposed to do to get things done that you want to see done. And the Lord will help you. He will help you. He's our Father who sees our future, Jaira, and will see to it that it happens and takes place. Can you say amen? Lord, we receive all this from you. You're destroying things that are in the way. And if there be any people that are also, you're dealing with them. And it's all being crushed. And everything is going to speed up. I speak another thing, acceleration. This is a book by itself. I swear before my father. I swear to God. Some, 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 somewhere it says, you shouldn't say that. But I swear I like to make an oath. And to say of a truth of truth that this message right here today is a book in itself and I think I'd like to work on this the 10 or 12 points that I said as prophetic boom blessings that just came down from the Holy Ghost can be in print and go around planet earth to bless multitudes of people say amen So my team, I'm telling you right now, take this word and uh, let's get it into point form and make it into a, a book. Now, if there could be enough focus on that, it could be done in a week. Not sure that is the case with everything else I have going on, but if, if, if it were to become a total focus, it could happen that quick. So whoever wants to help with that, be encouraging to me about that, people that want to work on that, do it. In Jesus' name. Remember this, time management is the right prioritization of activities and work of what you're supposed to be doing and then to focus on it. That also equals and leads up to good time management. Father, let the touch of healing come upon everybody to give them more strength, energy, health, empowerment, and also encouragement and provision, resources, all kinds of resourceful operations with people, situations, resources themselves, everything needed to have your life and your business and your career, even if you're, if you're in the ministry as I am, ministry be like a production line, like, a, like an excellent production factory. Say amen. That's another one. See, this, they just, this is amazing today. You see how this is just flowing here? This is amazing. You put these into practice, and that's why I want to make them in point form, that in print, they can, they can be read and prayed out. And you catch a hold of these, you, you can't stay the same. Your life will begin to uh, really take on the dim new dimensions of great progress. And if you don't do that, boy, you're really in the soup of uh, adversity. You're really in the wrong some deception has come to dissuade you and persuade you the wrongly away from what you're supposed to be doing. And God is going to deal with all that. Everything in the mind, in the mental realm. Here's another one. Wow. That is tricking us. Trick, you know. Deluding us. Deceiving. It's deceptive anyway. Lord, expose it and let it stop today in Jesus' name. That we can do everything we do. Any new instructions we need to receive, lift your hands right now. Whatever God wants to say, like he's going to show you how to progress in the thing that you're, that you're supposed to be getting done. And that's obviously a very right now thing. It's tangible in the realm of your business, your career, your life. 
your operations right now and let's say in the coming week as we've crossed over into the new month today and everybody goes oh new month blessing you know that's a typical churchy cliche thing I don't care if it's the 17th or the 1st or the 14th or the 28th of the month what do I care every day is a good day this is the day the Lord's made and I'll rejoice and be glad in it. every day his mercies are due every morning doesn't matter what day it is you know this month is going to be this and that that's fine to declare that well you declare but you should say it on the 15th or the 14th just like you would but you know it's cliche the first of the month begins like but we need to be doing that every day let me correct that that stuff this church stuff uh, it's okay but the, I mean it's okay if, you, if, you, if it motivates you it's good but the fact of the day of the calendar it means absolutely nothing because God is God every day 365 days a year and 366 days a year on the every fourth year which we call the leap year there's a February 29th February only it's the shortest month of the year it only goes to the 28th but there's like a a quasi kind of 29th of the month of February a day added every four years some people I met somebody that was actually born on the leap year day in the fourth year so like they would try to joke and say they only have a birthday every four years I would imagine they'll celebrate their birthday on the last day of that month 28th or maybe March 1st <laughs> They were born on the leap year day. They don't really have every every year is another year. It's not for every four years. So they get an extended life, although that would be nice, wouldn't it? If, if the Lord Jesus wasn't coming and things weren't so horrific in the world, but we're, sp we're still supposed to overcome all that, wouldn't it be great to live two, three hundred years? Come on now, have enough time. But the days of man shall be 120 years, God said, after the flood. So within that time, then he said, but in the psalmist, the psalmist said 70 or 80. By way of strength, 80. Normally 70. I cancel that in Jesus' name. Whatever, 70 years is not enough. And if you're anywhere close to that age or around that age, you'd say, yeah, amen. No, I, got, I need more. I need, you need to go to your 90s, yeah. Queen Elizabeth was 96, Prince Philip was 99. I think because they had a good, organized, rich life, it also helped their longevity. I said that before. And they had a use of time. I guess you would have a structure when you're the royal family. Let's, let's look at, let us look at people, I want to include this. Let us look at people that have achieved great things and, and use their life or what they've done to get there or to live there or to stay there and to keep moving forward in, the, in that realm of excellence and success and say, let, let me mold my habits or my schedule somehow around that the way that they did. Elon Musk was complaining that uh, he slept on the floor, he didn't have a house, he, he didn't have a house, like a mansion that he could have bought with his money. But by the time he was saying that, he was already worth like $30 billion. So who was going to feel sorry for him? Boo-hoo, Elon, yeah, it's so bad, you know, but you have all this money more than anybody. So we can't feel sorry for you. And now he's worth 10 times that, like 300 and something million. Billion, billion dollars. 300 and something billion. When he was walking in the tens of billions, uh, which is a, uh, a deca, deca billionaire, ten, deca means ten, cent a billionaire, that's where he is now, means over a hundred. Centi, centi meaning a hundred. Who's going to feel sorry for him that he works so hard? Now, one thing about him, he's a visionary. He's, 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 he works with his mind, you know, to believe something and to go for it. And he doesn't get diverted from it. Donald Trump is also like that. Look how determined the man is. In spite of all opposition, he just keeps going. 
he, it's built in him to have that resolve to do what is his mission now and what was his mission in business. Great. Look at that. Imagine, imagine people look around and see these people all around, like this little church over there, this guy over there, this guy want to be in business over there, this one that got a, big, a new car and some money, he's flashing around like he's all arrogant. And, and you're like, these people are like, these people are very low on the food chain. They're very down the totem pole. They're, they're nowhere. Nothing to say, nothing to teach, and then people are competitive and hurtful and hateful and unreliable. You see all that? You're like, what kind of environment is that to be in? As I have, opt out of it. It's good to also have a friend. It's also good to have a friend that you can talk with. And then as you talk, you get more revelation yourself about yourself. I've been doing, I did that, I did that all this last week. And a very good uh, business uh, thing we're doing, well, in the realm of. And I was just talking about things, and then as, as I'm speaking, you know, he's happy to listen and talk with me. We're friends, you know, we've, we've, be, we've become good friends. And, and we're doing something together. That's timely. That's timely. You know, I got to make that point. It's not that I, every day I'm just going to hang out and talk with everybody. I don't do that. I'm kind of busy. But uh, I, I, as I was talking about certain things, and that, I began to learn more about myself. And it began to challenge me. Hey, leave that alone. Forget about that. And the Lord showed me something this week that was very profound about myself and about certain issues and things and you you have to make decisions you know what I mean to build your like I spoke in the beginning build your emotional resolve so strong that nothing diverts you from the way I believe, therefore, I have spoken. I have spoken, so let it be written, so let it be done, as the Pharaoh said in the Ten Commandments move. But that's God's thing for us. It wasn't for a wicked Pharaoh <laughs> of Egypt. <laughs> so let it be written, so let it be done. I have spoken. I have spoken. It becomes law. See, that's why we have to watch what we say. You know? Don't ever say anything negative too much about situations or people or yourself or doesn't help. I, I want to add this to the realm of, uh, of working on yourself, toxicity. You need to get rid of toxic thinking. Anything that's grievous, anything that's a complaint, yeah, we have them. Oh, I do to the heavens. But I have to deal with that. That's my job to deal with that. Nobody can do that for me. The Lord can show me about it. He helps me with that. Yes, he puts his finger on it. He points to it. I go, oh, yeah. But I, it's my job to deal with myself and my issues, whatever they are. So powerful. Thank you for this rich word today. It's one of the richest, I think, ever. Let my voice be amplified to millions of people around the planet that need to hear these teachings. And Father, everything that would stand in the way to uh, try to hinder our progress in any way, you're destroying it today. Lift your hand and say, I claim that for myself too. Whatever it is that would be in my way, it's being destroyed now in Jesus' name by the, by the almighty hand of almighty God. Everything wrong is being exposed, but it's also being dealt with. See, I don't like the prayer of expose them and then you see it's a foolish thing and then you lose. I hate losing. We don't want to lose. We want the result, but anything that's in the way 
And anything that's de deceptive, people, are, people can be so evil. They lie, they cheat, they steal, they connive, they con, they do, it's, 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 it's beyond fathoming. But they're going to pay for that. But the thing is, you need to step out of the way of that, opt out of all that. So you see a lot of foolishness going on, a lot of nonsense. As I, I, I allude to these things, I talk about them because I want people to see also what I see. It's a very positive motivation for saying anything that might seem uh, exposing or negative about anything because you look and go, oh yeah, that is nonsense. I don't need to take my time with that. I don't care who it is or what it's about. Anything that's not like lifting you, progressing you, helping you go higher, fixing things in your world, helping you develop, helping you grow, you have to deal with them, let God annihilate them and just put them out of your way. Today, in Jesus' name, so be it. The dilemma of time is this, we have only so much time. Let's get busy about everything. Everything. Pull out all the stops, you know. I pull out all the, all the pins that are holding things on the wall. Just pull them. Let everything fly. Let everything work, let everything work from today. And, and I ask God to give us the strength, His healing power upon our physical uh, persons, our emotional life, everything we need from Him to help perform the duties that He not only wants us to do, but he, that, he, that He expects us to do. We need to get busy on all that. And everybody else that these smoke screens and what people call them sideshows or all this other stuff or unreliability or you feel disappointed about this and that, get rid of it. Get delivered. And repent to God today, right now, for ever letting it affect you. Because it wasn't supposed to. But it did. But that's okay as long as you deal with it right now. This also ties directly into time management because the quicker you get free from some things that have been like uh, clouding your vision or your mind or disappointing you or whatever, the quicker you're going to get on with the real program that he has. Say a big amen. Wow. So the Lord bless us and keep... Let his face shine upon us. Bless us to overflowing. Share this with somebody. And work with this. Work with this. All these truths because God is bringing them to pass. I'm sure I'll continue in this. Uh, thank you for being my partner. That's it for now. The Lord bless you. The ways to sow are in the heading of the titles of the messages. You can take advantage of that. Partner with this grace. And I believe as you sow into a word like this, God will begin to cause a, a manifestation because the, the, the anointing you respect is the anointing you attract. The word you respect is by by partaking of it and connecting with it. And you do that tangibly, financially even. It's the word that you see working in your life. The benefits of this are paramount. They're beyond fathoming what God's about to do because we're there. What, what we call that next season is already here. It's not like something coming. It's already here. That's why I say it doesn't matter which day it is, you know, redeeming the time. People like to say also from Isaiah 60, 22, I want to include this in time because I've taught on this. Uh, when the time is right, it'll happen. No, he said, I will hasten it in its time. In other words, when you're ready, I was already ready. Let it happen. I, all, I, all, I already wanted it to happen, the Lord would say. People say, well, God has a a specific time and when the time is right it'll happen whoa, whoa, whoa. what do you mean he didn't want to do it before everything that's his will he didn't want to do it he had a he had a wait for a certain time no 
Who he's waiting for is us. So Isaiah 60.22 has been mistaught, misrepresented by a lot of people in the church. Thinking they're talking about time, like there's a specific time, and when the time is right, it'll happen. No, God didn't say it, I, it'll happen in my time. He didn't say it'll just happen when you thought about it. He said, in its time, in other words, ITS, when it is ready, boom, that thing is going to happen. And guess what? God was never not ready. If, you, if anyone would try to even uh, uh, think of this, think of, the, of a thought to say that God wasn't ready to do something because of a calendar, you got to be kidding me. He was already ready. Are you seeing that? It's us standing in the way. It's us standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> I remember that old, that old song. Someone said, I've been in the way for 40 years. Yeah, you've partially been in the way. In the way. They're meaning in the way of Jesus. We're walking with him. But you've also been in the way. It's you that block things. Let all those come out. They call them the stops or the quirks or the things that hold water back. You know, you plug up a thing. All those plugs, all those things, let them just be taken out. And let everything flow down in Jesus' name. Because the time is ticking away. What we have to get done, we have to get it done now. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Take this and work with it. And I'll talk to you later. Love you much and be blessed. Time. The clock is ticking. What are you doing about it?